Welcome to Sunshine Art and Drawing. Today I am going to be doing a colouring in page from this book called Dream Cities. It's by Rosie Goodwin and Alice Chadwick. It was a really pretty book my partner bought for me, so I'm going to do a nice page out of this. And what I thought I would do is I would review these Faber Castell Art Grip Aquarelle pencils. It's a tin set of 24 pencils and they are watercolour pencils. They're really really beautiful. They're a good mid-range, so they're not the cheapest Faber-Castell pencils, but they're not your um, polychromous kind of really expensive ones. These guys are in the middle, which is quite handy if you're looking for something that's a bit of an upgrade from the cheaper pencils. These are really really lovely set. I have been using them for a while now, so let's open them up and I'll show you. So they come in a lovely tin, and you also get a little sheet with some instructions and also the set of colours that they have, the whole range. And then the, the one that I've highlighted is the range that this pencil is, so it's the ones that come with that. You don't get every colour, but you get a really good selection. So here are all the pencils here, and they are a lovely, strong, sturdy wooden pencil with little grippy dots. Let me put the focus on and I'll bring it up closer so you can see. So, the pencil itself, just ignore the ink that's on my hand, is got these little dots on them, and the dots are really, really handy for gripping the pencil a little bit better. They're also a triangular shape. So, as you can see, they're like a nice little triangle, so they don't roll off the page, like off your page or off the desk, and each one has the colour on the end. So, they're a really lovely, simple little pencil, and they also, which is really quite handy, is they put the colour number on every pencil. So as you can see, this one, if I can bring it close enough, is 115 or 115. So if you grab your little booklet, 115 is dark cadmium orange. So you can kind of look up and find the names of them. That way you don't have a big long name printed on every pencil, you just kind of match it up with a little bit of paper. So I've chosen which one I'm going to do today. And let me just open this one up. So I'm just going to pop these to the side for the moment. It's a really, really beautiful book. And let me turn off that focus. Otherwise it will sit and flick for the whole video. So this book here is a really lovely book. Every single picture seems to be two pages across. So I'll show you the first one that I've done, which is this one here. And I just did this in regular colour pencils which I found really fun and it turned out really pretty. I made it look like there's flames behind the buildings, I don't know why. But what I'm going to do today is I've post-it noted this one so I don't have to go searching for it, is I'm going to do this side of this one. If I did the whole thing it would take me hours. So I thought I would do one side in these watercolour pencils and see how that turned out. So let's remove that post-it and we're going to get started. So I thought I would start with the large areas first, and that's probably the best thing to do with watercolour pencils, is you choose what colours you want to do in the larger areas, and you put a fine layer down. So say for example I wanted to do this background, and it's going to be the sky, so we'll pick a sky blue. So I'm going to pick this blue here. This blue says it's 147, so if I look at my little booklet, 147, doo, doo, doo. they're not quite in order every time, mm -hmm. hmm, aha, 147 is right at the end, it is light blue, handy, so if I do a small section I'll kind of show you what I mean, if you take the pencil kind of on its side, I might need to sharpen some of these, you can sort of do a very fine layer of colour. So we'll do it in sections because it makes it a little bit easier because one section can dry while you're doing the next section. So I don't want to put a lot of this down. I just want to put a small amount. And you can go both ways because it doesn't matter if you're going to be putting water with it. So once you've placed a small amount down, I'm just going to have to push this in a bit to get into that edge. And this is the good thing about watercolour pencils, is you don't need to be exact. Because all you're doing is kind of laying down some of the pigment, and as soon as you add the water, it will blend out. So let's get a little 
brush, probably this guy. I found synthetic brushes work really well for um, watercolour. They don't hold a lot of water, which you probably don't want a lot of water. When you're doing this sort of watercolour pencil, you want just a fine amount. And as you can see, the slight scratchiness of the synthetic brush works really well to kind of move the pigment around a bit and get it in the spots that you want. And then you can touch up the edges. And as you can see, you've done one little section. It's very, very pale blue. Let's try maybe a little bit of a darker blue. So we'll let that section dry and you can come back after once it's dry and put more colour over it so you don't have to worry too much. So let's try this blue. This one here is 143, which I'll find him on here somewhere. Cobalt blue. This guy is cobalt blue. This is a little bit darker. This might be a bit easier to see on the camera. So just give it a little bit of a nice colour. Here we go. And as I said before, you don't need to be exact. You can just kind of do it a bit scratchy like that. Grab your paintbrush, a little bit of water. And then as you can see, it all just blends out. It's really, really handy if you're learning watercolour as well. Because a lot of the watercolour tricks that you do with pan colours will work on these, like putting salt on them, using um, different brushes to get different techniques. And also you can use like things like a spray bottle. Once you've coloured in the whole picture, you can just spritz it with water and it'll call this, make this cool little dappled effect all over your artwork. Um, I think I need a new brush. This one's kind of splitting. There we go. Once you've blended that out, as you can see, it becomes like a nice little watercolour section. So I think I like that blue better, so I think I might use that one for the sky. So we'll do the other side on there. Try not to rock the whole table too much. And with these watercolour pencils, I think less is more. If you tried to colour in really thickly, you would spend a lot of time trying to blend out those thick, hard lines. Oops, if I grab the right thing. i use a smaller brush. These are newer, so they might work a bit better. Yeah, that works a lot better. I've got a couple of really old brushes. I probably need to get some newer ones. It's got a drip on it. I don't want that on our work. The smaller the brush, the more fine detailed you can be. So if you find it difficult to do really fine details, try and pick up a little brush. Like this is a um, size 2, so it's a very, very small brush. And it's a slight liner brush. It's got long bristles. I think these are made for watercolour. And there you go. So as you can see, this one you can barely see. It's not quite dry yet. So we'll go back to that one once it's dry. I'll just continue on with what I'm doing. So you end up with these lovely sections of blue. And if you don't want to pick up the brush every single section, you can just colour the whole thing and then sit there with the water and finish it all off. Now because this is a larger section, if you take your brush on its side, I mean, sorry, your pencil on its side, you can shade. As you can see here, this is normally what I would do for a larger section, is I take the pencil on its side, but you want it to kind of be flat, this edge to be flat. So you're doing it right when you get blue all the way up here. It'll come off when you sharpen the pencil. But just remember to rotate it every now and again, then you get a bit of an even wear on the pencil's lead. And as you can see, I'm trying very hard to get right to the corners, but I'm not trying to be perfect. And I'm giving a bit of a wide berth to those thin fins that are on the, I guess they are windmills, they're so, um, the windmill power station type things. Can't remember what they are called. I guess they're windmills, wind farms, that sort of thing. So we'll get our brush, make sure there's no huge drippy bits. 
I'll kind of like go a bit crazy in the center and then as you get to the edges then you be a bit more gentle like so might need a bit more water because it's easier to kind of touch up the center than it is to adjust the edges if you've gone over the line and I have found using a um using it to do the larger sections first if you do go over the lines you're going to be coloring a different color on the smaller sections so it'll kind of hide it it won't look as bad so just want to make sure you blend it well before it dries Now I'm not going to talk the whole way through this because I know that this painting is probably going to take me, you know, an hour or two to do. That's why you've always got to kind of give yourself a good amount of time to do things. Don't rush. Just take your time. Relax and... That's the whole point of art. Art is supposed to be relaxing. So when you've had a tough day or you've been trying to do something and it's just not working out well, it's always helpful to spend a bit of time and do something like this. Another really, really handy thing for, um, let me get a thicker brush just to get a bit more water in the center section. Another thing that's really handy is um, if you use one of those water brushes, they work really well.
now that I've finished colouring in this um, lovely page, I have done like a mixture of reds because I was kind of going for that kind of Tuscany or sort of South California kind of red brick red houses with the oranges and the reds and the really nice bright colours. And I wanted to make the um, lighthouse kind of look a little bit like it's made of stone. Rather than making it look bright white or bright red, I kind of did like a peachy colour with the brown. There's a couple of tips that I have for you um, for using watercolour pencils in general and also using this set. Um, if you do two dry colours over the top of each other, like I did in um, this section here, where I did like a green and a brown, you'll find that your streakiness of the brown will still show through, which is kind of the effect I was going for. You can also add extra colour after it's dried and then blend that in like I did with the yellow here just to kind of show a bit of highlight to these little, I think they're little brick walls or something. I'm not really sure, maybe they're bushes. It's sort of hard to tell in this art style. And um, anything that I thought would be white, I kind of tried to do a colour because it's not always fun to have white sections. So I did this little, um, little caravan in sort of a purpley colour, make it look a little bit more fun. Um, there isn't a grey in the set, but if you water down the black quite a bit, it works quite well. Another tip is if you want a very, very pale colour, you can draw on either another piece of paper, or I just draw on the tabletop. This is just like a plastic tabletop that I can wash off. And then just a few drops of water, and you'll find you've got a real, real pale colour. That can be handy for this stone colour. I was adding a bit of red to it. Um, you can see that there are some sort of paint strokes and things all in this sort of section. I kind of like that, but if you want it to be very smooth, you need to colour quite smoothly and all in the one direction. But watercolour pencils are pretty forgiving in that way. One of the things you probably don't want to do is to wet the paper and then try to colour over wet paper. You're likely just to tear straight through the paper. Um, even if you use thick paper, it usually doesn't work. So always colour first, then add your water. If you want to add more colour, wait for it to dry, or like I did, um, use a hairdryer or a fan to dry it off quickly. Um, I found this set is really good. I use it a lot. This is probably my favourite watercolour set that I've had. Um, if you're looking for the set, it comes in a 12, a 24 and a 36. So you can get like a smaller pack if you'd like to try them out. And this little tin, my partner bought this for me, so um, I don't know how much it is, but I believe they're around about $20 to $30 for this set in Australia. And for the 12 set, I think it's about 12 to 15 So they're not incredibly expensive. Um, the standard Faber-Castell like classic colour watercolours, I haven't been able to find another set of those, but I have been looking for them because I want to um, do a review of those as well because they're quite good. Um, those are like... 10 maybe less than ten dollars so these are kind of your mid-range they do make a like an artist's version i think they are similar to the polychrominous faber castell pencils but they're a watercolor from memory they have like a tiger on the front of them that's like i try to remember which set is which by what's on the front of the package i know that's probably not a good way um but if you're looking for those i know they're on amazon and stuff like that so if you want just like the 12 set of the polychrominous i'm looking out for those because i'm going to get those for a review because what i want to do is in the future i want to get all three so faber castell do three ranges they do a very very simple range called classic they do this mid-range and i think they call it creative studio i've seen that on a lot of it it's in the little corner of most of their this kind of range and then they've got the artist range which is your polychrominous ones your um pit pens Things like that, um, those are your more expensive where you'd be paying $30, $40, $50 a set. So if you're not really, you know, that well off after Christmas and you're looking for something that's sort of that mid-range, these I would recommend. They are a really, really wonderful set. Nice and strong. They don't break very easily. They're a tiny bit dusty, but that's because the pigment's quite high because they're watercolour pencils. Um, all the Faber-Castell pencils that I've had are excellent. I could recommend them. Um, all the time for quality. I also have a set um, sort of as a comparison of I just have them over here. They're the Derwent version of the watercolor pencil So they're sort of like that standard Derwent classic pencil, but they're watercolor version. They're just as good um, You can get them in a 12 and a 24. So if you can't really afford these the Derwent ones are quite good, too so um, I just wanted to sort of give my review of these pencils. I hope you really enjoyed this one 
and if you have any questions definitely pop a comment down below I'll always answer any questions and if you leave me a nice comment I'll leave you one too um, so hopefully you have a really really nice day it's looking like it's going to rain here but hopefully it's sunny where you are have a sunshiny day thanks so much for watching